Hi, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is based on Persona 5. Persona 5 has great animations and stylish visuals. In the game, there's a move used in battle called the All Out Attack, in which the entire team attack the enemies at the same time. My goal for this project is to rebuild the cinematics and effects from this move using Unity. The All Out sequence is made out of three essential parts. The Mirror Break sequence, in which the characters jump as the mirror behind them breaks and shows the art from all the characters. Then, there's the attack sequence, where the monsters are in the center and get attacked from fast trails moving on the screen. And finally, there's the pose sequence, where one of the characters makes a pose, and after that there's a transition between its 3D model and its 2D art. I started by downloading one of the 3D models from Mixamo in order to use it in the project. In Mixamo, there are several ready-to-use characters and animations you can use on your games. I downloaded the following animations, one for standing, one for crouching, one for jumping, and one for a victory celebration. First thing I did was to add the Cinemachine package to my project. With Cinemachine, I can add several virtual cameras for the cinematic cuts later on. So I started by positioning one character and creating my first virtual camera in front of him. Then I started working on the timeline window to build the sequences. With Timeline, I can easily place animations and transition between them. To do that, I created an animation track and made a reference to the character animator. Then, I can just drag the animations I want to the timeline and easily set a smooth transition between them. Another thing Timeline can do is create control tracks. So I decided to make a simple particle effect for the character jump and use the control track so it only emits when the character jumps in my timeline. Then, I added all of the characters to the scene and repeated the same timeline process with a bit of offset to each animation. Then, I started to create the 3D model of the mirror pieces using Maya. After that was done, I imported it into Unity and painted the pieces with a red material. Now, it was time for some scripting. As always, since there's a lot of animation involved, I've added the DudeSwim plugin to the project. Another cool thing Timeline has are activation tracks. An activation track enables the object whenever it's placed on the timeline, so I can use this to activate scripts and use the start function on a script to execute them automatically whenever I want in the timeline. So on this first script, all I do is go through all of the mirror pieces and use the do twins do local rotate and do local scale to rotate them randomly and shrink their size a little bit. I also added a bit of screen shake to the camera using do shake position. For the part in which the mirror pieces move towards the camera, I selected the pieces I wanted and duplicated them so I can make a direct reference to their transform on the second script. When creating my second script, I decided to use a do-tween sequence, which I explained a little bit of how sequences work on my last video. In the script, I made all the normal pieces rotate even more and then move the selected pieces towards the camera on my desired positions. After all that was done, all I did was move everything forward out of the camera. For the fast attack sequence, I created a new virtual camera on another position in the scene. Then on my timeline, I added a Cinemachine track to cut between cameras. On this second camera, I added two spheres to represent the monsters. I started working on the third script that moved the monsters away from the camera simply by using Do Move Z. To simulate the fast trail attack, I created a particle system that has the trail property enabled. I also added a screen shake for the camera while the particles are emitting. Then we move on for the pose sequence. For this, I placed my final character and created another virtual camera. On the virtual camera, I set its aim to be the final character so it always looks at it. Then I added that camera to my timeline on the Cinemachine track. 
I also created another visual camera for the character close up. On the timeline, I made that camera transition smoothly instead of a cut. After all that was done, I created the UI canvas that would show the character art after the pose was done. Now for some polish, I recreated the particle frames from the jump particle using the video as reference. To make the particle animate between those frames, I used the texture sheet animation property on a particle system. There's a great video from Making Stuff Look Good in Video Games that has a great explanation on that property. Then, I recreated the shapes of the selected mirror pieces to use it as a mask for the character sprites. I also created an art for the model simulating the look from Persona 5. After that, I added the arts to the selected mirror pieces by creating a sprite mask as a child of the object and also added the character sprite. For the fast attack particles, I changed the trail from the black particle to be similar to the jump dust. Then, I created a new particle system to simulate the little attack shines that show up while the attack is going on. I recreated the frames using the video as reference and apply it to the particle system using the same texture sheet animation property. Then I went to the last screen canvas and changed the character image to my render. Last thing to do was to add two particles to the enemies. One that was similar to the jump particles and another that was basically the same but with super stretched lines. After a bit of minor adjustments, this is how it turned out. As always, the link for the project's repository is on the description below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and help the channel grow. There's a bunch of cool projects coming very soon. So I'll see you in the next one.